The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Saban Entertainment, and Subaraya Productions. Maho! 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 Hello, everybody! Welcome to another episode of the TokerCast Reviews. Yes, Yay. this week, episode 46. Jesus. I'm getting better at this, I promise. Episode 46, Maho Sentai Magi Ranger. We are almost at 50 episodes. Yes, we are very, very close. What, we're going uh, what's going to be our 50th episode? So we're 46. X. Uh, Ultraman X. Ultraman X, nice. Yeah. Aw, uh, I won't be in it. <laughs> there, there. That's your problem. But yeah. I have another channel to worry about. You can go screw Maho yourself. Maho Sentai Magi Ranger. <laughs> Maho, Maho, Maho. Yes. <laughs> Shameless plug. You know, going back and watching this show. Maho, Maho, Maho. Maho. It's not said enough in this entire show. Maho. It's not. It's about, it's said about as much as Jasmine Weiss, but they ought to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's very strange going back and watching this show because I don't remember as much about it. There were a lot of things I forgot. It got. wasn't that memorable of a show the first time we watched it. But I Well, this is it. the first time I have watched it all the way through. I liked it I more started watching time. it a little bit when we were in college, but this is the first time I watched it from start to finish. I'm going to agree with you on this one. It was better the second time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and start where we usually do, the opening. I love it. I don't like it. I'm in the middle. <laughs> I don't think I skipped it once. Yeah. I did. Every single time. I don't like I it. I actually really like this one. I did not like the singer. The singer ruined it for me. Really? Yeah. He just sounded bland and sort of atonal throughout the entire thing, so I'm just like, ugh. Yeah, but his energy's there, and I mean, he's, he's not a bad singer. Yeah. We've had worse openings. We've had much worse openings. We, we, we have. We've also had better ones. We have. Dina. The fire. That's another one. Well, that's the ending. Speaking of which, the show has a dance ending, though. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it, it's like the same thing about lips. By the way, these suits have lips, boo. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and start at the beginning with the first episode of this show. Uh, all the show, all the episodes in the show go by name of Stage, which makes sense for the magic theme. Mm. Uh, the Morning of Departure is Stage 1, where we end up meeting the Ozu family. Um, you have another family, Sentai. Yes, it's been a very long time. We have not had one was, since. Mm -hmm. O-Ranger was the last one, I believe? No. Nope. No, go sorry. Go go five. Go go five. Five. Yeah. Uh, we we end up lots of duh. <laughs> meeting this entire, well, I'm not going to say this entire, most of this family, with the mother of uh, Three sons and two daughters. Mm -hmm. The two daughters are Hoka and Urara. Uh, those, those are the four, uh, or uh, oldest to youngest. And then we end up having the three sons. Uh, we'll go from youngest to oldest in this one. We have Kai. Red. Uh, Makito. Yellow. Well, Tsubasa Kai, Tsubasa, and Makito. and Makito. Yes. And for those of you who have watched the show before and have also watched Ghostbusters, you definitely recognize Tsubasa as he played Beatbuster in that show. And he was also in the Ninja. For yes, he was in the Ninja for one episode. He as showed, he showed, he's one of Blue's magic teachers. Yeah, <laughs> at the magic academy he goes to in London. Okay, that that's that's, that's a, actually not a bad in joke. I like that. No, it's pretty freaking funny. No, yeah. the in joke was I think it's superhero Tyson Z. Where he pilot, where he they put the Megazord key and he turns into the in the Magic Ranger Zord and he's like, this feels right. That's an ninja. <laughs> That's an ninja. Yeah, okay, fair enough. This is just you know, hey, oh, reference. Uh, but yeah. Well, the other one kind of is too. <laughs> in episode one, we end up getting to realize that these five siblings all have magical heritage from their mother and father as they end up fighting an, an invasion from the underground empire in Fershia. Because it's Harry Potter up in this bitch now. It really, really is. <laughs> but it's a much better name than two. I like the Inferno. Yeah. Yeah, they're cool. I like these people. Especially this show does its villains more or less in three arcs. Mm -hmm. But they're all connected because they're all a part of Inferno. They do it so much better than Go Sage does, mm -hmm. where everything is just connected by one person. But their villains are all just so disconnected from each other. So it works in this one. But yeah, we end up meeting Kai, who's another loud red. He's very, very loud. I didn't mind it in the show. I did. <laughs> he was very young, and I'm just like, this is sort of the problem we end up having the youngest be the main focus of the show, mm. because we end up hearing his voice a lot. 
So <laughs> just like I'm not. We do end up hearing his voice a lot, but I think the other siblings get enough focus, and I like that their guidance helps him change and grow as a character, and he becomes less of a less of a little bastard throughout the course of the show. And yeah. honestly, his voice isn't as bad as Gekki Red. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go with yes on that. I honestly didn't mind Gekki Reds as much. Uh, but yeah, meanwhile, in the underworld, after Kai is saving a, uh, a little girl's balloon, uh, Vancuria, the queen of the vampires, is surprised that everyone is awake. Uh, Baronkin, who's like the leader of the first arc of this show, and Wolzard, who is very, very <laughs> important for this entire show. Wolzard, it's a combination of wolf and wizard. Clever. Very clever. Now, Vancuria can also end up turning into these two separate people. Nye and Maya. Which did not get adapted into Mystic Force. There's probably a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. the fact that I'm happy about it. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like them if only because they were hot. I thought so. Nye and Maya. What can I say? I'm a sucker for goth girls. You don't want to talk. <laughs> Alright, in the Ozu house, Makito has... Oh, he honestly... He runs a garden, Makito does. Mm-hmm. And it's anaki salad. All day, every day, you're going to eat your greens. Uh, yes. Makito makes Makito salad. might have been my favorite in this whole show. But he is the worst outside. <laughs> He's the reason we didn't get it 10 years after. Really? Yes. Interesting. Uh, but yeah. I suppose we'll go more into that. Yeah, we will. At the, when we get to the characters. Uh... Makito makes out a Hoka puts a dressing on it, and Subasa is not thrilled in his very, very, very monotone way. This is the problem with this character in this show. He's extremely eh the entire time. He doesn't really do much inflection or anything like that. Um, Hoka ends up asking her mother if she believes in magic, and her mother says it is childish. And then later on, they end up getting attacked by once a purple seal ends up going into uh, coming into the upper world. Uh, their mother rushes them away, and a troll appears. <laughs> now, Insert internet troll joke here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It punches the wall, they run up the stairs, their mother stops... The troll and t- appears and goes, first! Basically. <laughs> You're not lying. <laughs> but yeah, she transforms into Magi Mother. Their mother does. I like this suit. I, I like this suit quite a bit. Like, it's very white, it's, very, it's a very plain suit, but there's... Her magic de- is snow-based, so yeah. it makes sense. But. It, there's enough detail and separation between, you know, the silver and the white that it just makes it just pop out that much more. And the gold trimming is also very good detail. Yeah. I like the snowflake on the head on the too. It That's brings the one. entire suit together. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it's very, very good. It's a great suit. Yes, but, you know, she, the kids are very, very confused and bewildered at the fact that their mother couldn't use magic. <laughs> Why is mommy a Power Ranger? Shut up, that's not here. <laughs> uh, but yes, she ends up gathering the other kids together and basically ends up giving them all their magic except for Kai because he's very, very headstrong. He's a little bit too reckless and she can't trust him. Insert your Wizard Harry joke here. But to be fair, it's legitimately in this point all his... Uh, but yes, after this point, they all end up going out into, you know, basically, you know, fighting the bad guys here. The Zobils are the uh, foot soldiers mm-hmm. of this one. Uh, they end up trans. I'm not going to talk about the suits yet until we get all five of them together. Uh, but the four end up uh, transforming. They fight using their elemental powers because blue has water, pink has wind, uh, yellow has lightning. He calls it thunder, and I'm just like, that never is a thing. It works in the theme song. I'm sorry to imagine Dragon's joke here. Green has ground, which basically also ends up stemming to the trees. Oh, right. The uh, swamp thing. Yes. Wolzar ends up appearing at this time. Let's talk about his suit. I love it. It's great. It's a great suit. <laughs> I really like this one. It's really fucking awesome. It gets, yeah. better, it gets better by the end of the show, but that's for bias reasons. Because it's red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it becomes walls on fire at the very end of the show. Hilarious though, I'm wearing blue. <laughs> and I'm wearing red this time. I'm I should have brought a red shirt to change into at the I end of this. I am going to change our name colors. <laughs> I should have absolutely brought a red shirt to change into at the end of this so I could be full star. And I, once again, I'm wearing plaid. But yeah, they all end up fighting. Instant plaid shirt. Uh, Anybody who gets that joke, thank you. I don't. I'm talking about them. Now, Wolzard ends up going and basically just ends up running through the Magic Rangers. He ends up taking green uh, and 
the others, but Green ends up getting the brunt of it. Um, Miyuki family ends up basically giving Kai, you know, his permission to actually use his powers more or less. And that's how magic works. You need you need to. Ask I have a problem first. with the magic in the show. And after we get off the first, because you need to ask your mom's permission first. Yeah, it's like the internet in the nineties. Ask your parents' permission before logging on. But, <laughs> WW- ask your parents' permission before casting a Monica Dabra. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so since they all talk. five have their suits on, let's go ahead and talk about the Magic Ranger suits. I these are some of my favorites. They're great these suits. are some of my absolute. Favorites. I love these suits. <laughs> I think they're okay. I love the pattern on the faces, how the cra- like the top of the head is different. I love the I love the different face plates, the way it's different for everyone. I like that. Capes kill it for me a little bit. The capes are great. The capes are short, but I, I like them. That's I, why I they're the short. Capes. They're like the kid capes, like you that you outgrew. But I can understand why. They're just long enough. I think they're just long enough. Any longer than that, and it would have been... They just would have been getting in the way. Because of the way they're constantly swishing... So the yeah, way they are constantly swishing and turning around, especially during their roll call... Yeah. They, I mean, if it worked they would have just been wrapped around their face. I think if we'll it talk worked, about it a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's just the Six Ranger. It's a, it's a nice separation. Yeah. I like that it's shorter on them. Maybe now, to symbolize the amount of magic that he can use, since that's why his cape is bigger. They also make these uh, these side arms. You can look at it that way. Called the magic sticks. I love those. I sort of have a problem with them in the fact that only the guys get a specialized version of it. <laughs> Sexist. Yeah. Yeah. Pink and blue basically end up having to use the base form of it. Uh, yellow ones are getting more or less a crossbow. Uh, green ones are getting an axe, which makes sense. And red ends are getting a sword because, because he's tradition. red. Because he's red. Because he's red. Which they'll break next season. So I'm just like, yeah. But I really wish that... He, well, um, got White own. got a special version. Sword. Yes, she more or less got a scepter. Essentially, it's just the sword blade comes down, but she still uses it as a wand kind of thing, so... Now, at the end of well, the... Sword, hers, hers well, is wand for range, you know, sword for close. Her Hers is bigger than yours. Moving on. She has a staff. Uh, but at the end of this episode, uh, Wolzard ends up transforming into Wol Kentaros as after he ends up calling his uh, horse Valkyrion, who you know I'm gonna save that because there's I have a problem with this horse later on. This is about what doesn't happen to it. So, <laughs> but I was about to say I love the mechs in this show except for one. We'll talk about it. I think I know which one. You, well, we all I think we, we all know which one. We all know which one you're talking about. Yeah. But over, but overall, the mechs were very well designed, very well, like very imaginative. Because have we ever had a? I know I'm jumping ahead. But have we ever had a Sentai where the mech had an animal form and a robotic form? Last well, year we're going to talk about that here. Go for it. Uh, episode two. Uh, Volzar basically just ends up cutting down their mother right in front of them, and I'll sit here like this is a kid's show. <laughs> <laughs> picture. Thank you. Bring the kitties. But yeah. the critic, don't sue me. They end up basically... Uh, getting, do that. I <laughs> love that after, you know, because her weapon gets basically thrown out of her hand, lands in front of the kids, and they go pick it up and run away. Mm-hmm. It's just like the complete breakdown of them for a little bit. Like, Makito ends up taking, like, immediate charge. It's, it's the like, beginning of the out. hero's journey. Yeah. It's like, we gotta get out. And that's basically... Yeah. Just like they end up having their whole moment, they have this special room in the back where they end up meeting Mandragora Boy, <laughs> who isn't really. Annoying. I didn't mind him that much. Yeah, it's just like you know, there, you could be bumper. If, if only I didn't mind him as much, if only because he was confined to their base, more or less. He didn't follow them out into the world, and you didn't have to constantly hear him. And he was useful in his own way, because yeah. especially at the beginning. I of the kept show. making flowery references from Undertale, so. <laughs> I didn't know you played Undertale. I'm not, I didn't play Undertale, but I, I know enough about Undertale to know about Flowey. And the nightmare-inducing bullshit. Fair enough. Now, the first she ends up attacking again in this I don't episode. really know what you're talking about, but I'll take your word for it. Wolzard, no. Wolzard ends up basically up coming back. Uh, well, Wolzard basically still on the ground. And it's Night and Mare who are up and, you know, causing a whole bunch of destruction. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I uh, I hate the way they end up like transforming back into Vancouver because it's like their faces melt together, yeah. and it's like well, you don't like absorption. Gross. That's not something you're <laughs> fan of. No, I don't blame you. So gross. <laughs> and in this episode, we also end up getting to see their like magic forms, mm-hmm. which I like. We haven't gotten really 
Okay, there, here's the thing, though. They sort of make them work like the Kaka Ranger ones, or, or Ranger, Car Ranger, what have you, but it doesn't work as well because of the way that the team is sort of split up. You know, Green's a giant. Red basically can do a lot of things by himself. Yellow is a bird. <laughs> and Blue, like, yeah, she can use dog. legs, but she mostly ends up having, you know, the fin on the bottom because she's Magic Mermaid. Well, I mean, at least pink. I'm just going to say. And pink. she's just small. She's a fairy. Yeah. I, but I like the concept that they're going for, that they're each, you know, a different mythical creature, except for Red, because he's special. He's a phoenix. Well, he's a phoenix. Well, I mean, his Zord isn't. I'm talking about their Zord. Yeah. Right. Their Zords are like a mythical creature. You know, one's a Minotaur, one's a mermaid, one's a fairy. Garuda is the other one. That's yellow. Mm -hmm. Yellow is a Garuda. Red is a person. Because boring. (laughs) No, because someone has to ride the dragon form because... Which we get next episode. But, yeah, I like the idea. I always like the idea that they become their mechs, not they pilot their mechs. Yeah. Yeah. It's magic. Now, there, of course, you know, there are some things, especially because this Only is a family show, effects. <laughs> you know, dynamics are really a big thing in this show. So it's just like, you know, a lot of the team really have to learn how to really get along again after their mother is gone because they're, you know, sort of volatile mm. at the moment. And, you know, in episode three, they actually really ended up showing because Makito, being the oldest, isn't the leader that's Kai. Actually, Makito's number five in this case. Because mm-hmm. like, unlike O-Ranger, it doesn't work in this situation. Mm-hmm. So It's like, well, a real thing with lots of children, the youngest gets all the spoils. He really does. <laughs> Good God. Like, legitimately. And that show, when they end up transforming into Magic Dragon for the first time, and it's just Kai riding on top of them. <laughs> Some foreshadowing for the rest of this show. Mentioning this now, because it's actually really, really interesting to her uh, her actors. Hoka originally tra- tried out for Red. Hmm. And you know. there's a episode much later on where she and Kai and transformed. The body switch. Yeah. And it's like, if she would have played Red, I would have gone for it. I, w- I would have actually been all in. Because her acting in that episode... Is is great. Yeah. It's like, I've really approved of her. She's not a bad actress. It's just her character is kind of annoying. Yeah. But yeah, Magic Dragon, Ride the Magical Dragon in Stage 3. Uh, Makito finally has to get over himself. And I'm just like, okay, you know. Episode 3, Makito gets over himself. Yes. <laughs> by, and, playing a game, by playing a nice long round of get over. And I like in Episode 4, it's just like they sort of... Robert ends up getting turned into stone by the monster of that week, which I believe is a manticore. Which makes sense. Or it's either, what is it, a manticore or a... Gorgon? Uh, I can't remember the name. Of the thing, all I know is it was incredibly, incredibly true for Final Fantasy, and it bothered the hell out of me. The Malboro? No. What Although I think? I think that's one of the things they use later. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, if only I can remember the name of the monster in this. Which episode was this? This is episode four. If only I can remember the name of the monster in this one, but it ends up turning Yorara into stone, and the reason that they end up happening because Kai, of course, being his headstrong asshole of a self. Basically just tries to go out and Rara ends up having to save him. <sighs> but in this episode, though, we get one of the best mechs ever, Magic King. Magic King is great. It's such a good mech. <laughs> you love mechs with hats. It's so good. And I cannot wait until we get Lupin Ranger and Fashion Ranger because they also have hats. And I'm so excited for hats. <laughs> but yeah, this mech is incredibly good looking. It's The hat really ends up bringing it together. Cockatrice. Yes! <laughs> Fuck that thing! Fuck, why do those Final Fantasy VII is like the worst thing ever? That's thing you know you're dead. But, <laughs> but yeah, Magic King. I love the fact that it has those giant Garuda wings on its back. Yes, that's also extremely cool. Yeah, it's just like its wings. It makes it just look, well, one, super wide. So that's super intimidating. Mm-hmm. And it, it just looks great. Magic King is a really, really good looking mech. Also, that means we don't have to spend any time on getting a bullshit mech just to give it wings. You're not wrong. <laughs> no, this one starts with them. Yeah. Uh, and, and it does the whole I can be a dragon and a mech. A lot better than other type of Sentai, the Ninja. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to bash on the Ninja. 
Now, over the next like, a bu- couple of episodes, we end up getting to see a lot about well, uh, Wolzard and, you know, just his relation to the team itself. Because he's a very, he's a dark knight. He's all about power, but he's also He's not Batman. Well, he said a dark knight, not the dark knight. Fair enough, but he walked into that joke and he knows it. <laughs> but yeah. Demonetized. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in this episode, he's a very honorable person. And, you know, when Kai goes to protect a child, he won't end up striking Kai down because he is protecting a child. And in episode six, this is the first all, first time that we're actually getting to see Wol Kaiser, mm-hmm. which is uh, Volzard's, his combination with his horse, Black uh, You know. Also looks form. amazing. I love this mech. It's a very, very good mech. The heads are love skinny. Once again, we have it can be two things. It can be a centaur or it can be the mech. And we have never had nor probably will ever again have a centaur mech. That looks probably, pretty awesome though. It, it looked cool, but that's probably hell because you know that was too soon. Yeah, I know. You can tell. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very, very good Maybe mech. May, maybe nowadays because of all the CG that we have, right? Right? No. I need to go see the disaster artist. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mark. All right. Hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Wolzard. <laughs> uh, now, Wolzard in this episode also ends up taking the power for them to transform the magic thing away. <gasps> which is actually good. I like the fact that... they get We get it and then it gets taken away so they can't we can't get shoved down our throats. Yeah. Because, you know, it took a couple episodes for them to actually get the form. Dun, dun, dun. And it's so opposite of what we had nowadays. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like, you got it, and now we're taking it away from you. But now we get, you got it, here's more. Because and in a later episode... And more, and more. Looking at you, Q-Ranger. Bronken is basically very headstrong. He's sort of an... He, well, he is an ass. And they all, we didn't mention this, they're serving in Moth. Not Enema, like I called him a few times. <laughs> <laughs> that actually does end up making a thing later on. I'm going to save that joke. But, uh, yeah. But the Enma. <laughs> they do, end up, they serve Enma, which apparently in the past uh, was, you know, something very, very strong, or rather a very strong enemy for Magitopia, which is basically like the heaven in the magic world of uh, the Magic Rangers show. And since Bronken... Well, Wolzar can send the beast up to the surface, but he can't send Bronken because <laughs> it won't work for him. It's like he's too powerful to go through the seal that Wolzar has. Mm-hmm. But after he ends up getting the Magic King like transformation power, Bronken constantly wants him to send him up there, but Wolzar won't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nah. and, that, and they and like Bronken constantly is attacking him, but Wolzar is like, "I have magic, bitch!" and just shoots him across the. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's basically just how it is constantly working for him. So in later episode. Oh, Rocket ends up getting tired of him. Uh, he ends up using Vancuria to shoot like an arrow into uh, him when they're fighting. Mm-hmm. And it, Wolzar gets out of it fast enough, but it ends up taking Kai and Brachion down to like this another dimension. Mm. And in this dimension, Kai horse. ends up having some mixed feelings because this horse ends up helping his, uh, you know, his enemy defeat his mother. And he ends up taking an arrow out of it. It's just like, you're, you know, I can't leave you to just be injured. And the Baraki, I was like, okay, you help me, I'll help you. And they got there, and we end up getting... Then he's on a horse. Yeah, we end up getting a new form. A uh, Fire Kaiser. I like this mech a lot more than the Wolzard one. I can see why. It, like, it's really, the red brings the suit together. I Not love... only that, the head is kind of its own thing as opposed to just being the horse's head facing up. Yeah. So it's a little less jarring. But I can understand why. I, th- I honestly think the blue goes better with the black than the red does. Mainly just because there's not enough red for it to really... Yeah, it's really just the top piece, the chest yeah, and the head. Yeah, and... Yeah. But... It gets a main. That's, what... <laughs> that's always nice. It looks awesome because he, it, that's his final attack. He whips his hair I honestly, back I honestly <sighs> prefer the one that uh, red gets later on in the series. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, the white one. And we're not going to talk about this movie, but we'll talk about a little about the team up because that has to be a thing that we have to talk about. Yep, the team looks awesome, but yeah, because that form ends up appearing in the movie first, like the Magic Rangers, their movie, right? But we didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's subbed. No, it is. I found it. I couldn't. So, 
But yeah. This uh, is good. Fiery Friendship Fusion, stage nine. That's the episode that we end up getting Fire Kaiser. Such a great mech. Uh, this show has just. Great mechs. Except one. Great mechs all around. <laughs> mm. Okay, I'm holding a Jacksepticeye joke. <laughs> now, in episode 11 and 12, Night of the Vampires and uh, The Mark of Determination. The sense of sort of giving some background or really just some, you know, actual character development to Hoka because she has sort of been really flighty throughout this entire show. Mm -hmm. And basically in this episode, like, Nye and May are doing like some concert thing. They're turning people into vampires and Hoka ends up being one of the people that they end up turning into. And they don't end up solving this in one episode, though. As long as they don't sparkle. (laughs) They don't solve this in one episode, though. Which is always fun. I like that. They actually had to, like, you think that at the end of it, they're just going to go ahead and just have this only be a one-episode thing. No, Hoke is still under the, you know, spell of Ankuria. Once again, different from Sentai nowadays. Yeah. And then, basically, Tsubasa, because they all end up having their own well, things that they can do. Sorry, I was just remembering something. <laughs> like, um, Makito's really good with having things grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kai has alchemy, so he can just, you know, turn something into something else. Rara can see in... She's the crystal ball lady. Hoka could turn into anything, or rather any inanimate objects. In some cases, some animate objects like bees. So we could Hoka be a few times, and that's stupid. Mm. Um, and Hoka anything is kind of stupid. Subasa no, basically can do anything where he, you know, actually does actual witchcraft. You know, so potions. He, yeah, he could do potions. potions. He can bubble, bubble, toil, and trouble with the rest of them. And that basically ends up being the only way that they could turn Hoka back. Because he has a, in a create like some sort of crystal and he has a shoot Van Courier with it. And that basically just ends up releasing Hogan from the spell. But I like the fact that they had to do that over the span of two episodes. It's not something that just ends up, you know, happening. And in episode, I'm only going to mention episode 13 really quickly. Uh, because one, this is when we get the three solitary confinement Hades beasts that only last for one episode each. And this is also the one where we get to see Rara as the, sort of the closest to her mother. Mm-hmm. So she acts a lot like, after her mother's gone, she acts like the mother of their team. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, I like the fact that Urara really does end up getting a lot, because you could sort of tell Hoka got popular because of, you know, Kawaii Desenu. But Urara ends up having her own thing, too, and I like the fact that it really ends up working for her. Uh, in the last ep- in episode 15, The Bride's Other Brother, where we end up getting to see Hoka fake Mary, um... Which is an obligatory Sentai tradition at this point. Yeah. I have something along with that, with the other wedding that happens during the show, because it, it's a thing. Um, but yeah, we end up getting to meet a mysterious woman at the end of episode 15. Who, who could she be? Yes, this is the, uh, she's an amnesiac woman known as Rin, and her connection with the Infers- Infersia Gate. Because they end up finding out, uh, through the use of the three solitary to find the Hades Beast, that... She has, like, some sort of connection, and she has something on her wrist that whenever it rings, you know, all of the information can hear it. And this lady is actually known as uh, Luna Gel. I don't know why they use gel as the end of their names. Sun Gel, Luna Gel. It sounds like some weird, like, rub. <laughs> maybe maybe they were hoping that she'll be popular enough that they could start a line of hair products. Mm-hmm. Yes. This lady is... Your hair will sparkle like the sun with sun gel. Or, uh, or will eclipse it with, like, the moon with moon gel. Luna gel. <laughs> Luna gel. <laughs> and we're trademarking that. Now, Rin Go was... The token guest. Or rather, Luna gel. Was the last person to see Blaze gel, the, uh, the Ozu family's father, alive. His name was, I'm sorry, Blaze Gel? Blaze Gel. Oh, Blaze Gel. Okay. Yeah. I thought you said Blaze Gel. I mean, there weren't, gonna be a, there weren't going to be enough pot jokes to fill that up. Blaze Gel. Hashtag 420 Blaze Gel. <laughs> but yeah, she is the one who ended up But when you want to light it up, I want to have very nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's the one who ends up seeing the Hades Gate. And is basically connected to her life force. Uh, so as, as long as the Hades gates get closed, the Infersia can't get back up. Who like the fuck years ago. designs spells like that? It happens a few times in this show. I kn- that's my point. <laughs> like, Which is like, who the fuck thought that was... Like, like, I understand that magic is ancient and magic is different, but yes. from a logic standpoint... So if I get hit by a bus, world ends. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But Lunagel ends up being attacked by 
a former Heavenly Satan known as... I'll say this, they were creative, but they lacked something called foresight. Yeah. Ironically, a little for magicians. Uh, so she was oh, attacked... Do you hear that? That's the sound of two drums and a uh, symbol dropping off a cliff, thanks to you. But yeah, <laughs> Rachel, uh, who was a former Heavenly oh, Satan... Of drums in the world. ...ends up attacking her, Luna Jaya, she's about to go back to the Magitopia... And basically, she ends up losing her memory from this fight. Now, this ends up sort of building up to the second arc of the show. Well, it actually does just end up blatantly building up to that show because she's not the nicest person. Mm. When she ends up going back to Luna Jail, she was like, you guys suck. I'm going to go ahead and do this myself. And then Rolzar beats the shit out of her. She was and like, she's I like, all right, all right. I, t- I, I was a bit rash. <laughs> <laughs> That's my bad. Okay, I'm sorry. It's been a long week. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm now, sorry. <sighs> okay. So in episode 19, after they end up beating uh, Bronken, with the help of their mother's magic spirit or something like that, uh, because she... she or something up, like that. She ends up sort of end up making her appearance, you know, recurring throughout the rest of the show. Um, Vang, uh, Bran- Vangria was basically going out. She found a cave that she was taunting the Magic Rangers with. Uh, she was like, I'm going to run away now, and then they go ahead and follow her. She can't go into this cave because it's protected by a, basically, a magic force field. Once the kids end up going through it, though, she can go in. And they end up finding a lamp, a mummy, and there's also a frog there. <laughs> As you would. Yeah. Vancouver ends up taking the mummy back. Brings it back I think I've heard me. this joke before. I think I remember the first line. <laughs> oh, I have a mommy and a sentai walk into a bar. Now, at the beginning of this and episode, the bar though, closed. we actually do end up getting to see a fight that happened a very it long blew. time ago. Yep. Where we see that uh, uh, Heavenly State Rigel was fighting another Magic Ranger. And that Magic Ranger basically ends up sealing himself in with Rigel into this cave. That happens at the beginning of this episode. And then, you know, Vagaria ends up taking the mummy back. That ends up turning into Sorcery Priest Mimi. He's full of memes. Because he is not the nicest person on this planet. So, mm. <laughs> but yeah, they end up finding the lamp as well, who has a little genie inside. This genie is named <laughs> Smokey. First off, boo. Second off, it's a cat. Genie. It's a genie. Yeah, so... I kind I kind of liked Smokey. I thought it was cute. Yeah, he was our. It's just like it. His smile just kind of reminded me too much of the Cheshire Cat. I think that's the point. That's probably the idea. It's fucking creepy. And that's the point. <laughs> I didn't think so. I mean, yeah, I'll, he's not as bad looking as Green as Mullet. So. <laughs> yeah, in episode twenty, that frog has just fallen. He doesn't really have a mullet. It, the way he wears it makes him look like one. Mm. Yeah. No, because no, because. Slicked up in the front. You want to have the next joke I make? Why don't you kill that one? Too? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, okay. this is your fault. <laughs> but yeah, in episode twenty, this frog has basically been following them around for a while, and Aurora is like very, very scared of frogs. <laughs> but this frog saves her. Why she not? kisses it, and, and it turns it into a guy. <laughs> this is the heavenly. I've seen what? this video before. It was called Princess and the Frog, basically. That's, See, that's also some, the point. <laughs> I was going somewhere much different than your joke was. Oh, I knew where you were going, you nasty bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she kisses the frog and turns into a guy whose name is Sunjel, who ends up going later on by the name of Hikaru. And he transforms... Because into, no one can rock around the name of Sunjel. He transforms into a six ranger, Maggi Shine. Let's talk about this suit. It's fantastic. This is a great suit. It's bright as fuck. He is called Magic Shine. True. He's alright. I love his suit. It's like, I love how also the headpiece on top isn't equal. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it looks a little bit like Gines. Yeah, it kind of does. So. Except except it's missing the yeah, second the part. part. But even Gimes was asymmetrical. But it's so. like, they end up having like the sparkly gold and just like regular gold. I'm sparkly really... gold, regular gold, and blue. Yeah, and it, oh my god, it's the color scheme again. <laughs> but it's the first time they used it. <laughs> Meteor fucking beast. God damn it. We'll never be able to say that. There's a lot more gold in there than either Meteor or Beast had. Uh, Give them that much. 
And but yeah, he basically ends up becoming their mentor throughout the rest of the show. Only problem is, eh, hey, he's not. Uh, he's kind of a douche. Uh, no, he's just not the most interesting. <laughs> he's not very interesting, but he wasn't bad. He definitely wasn't bad. I love how the the lamp becomes his weapon. Yes. And the genie is empowering it. Yep. It's great. Now, they have gotten some random magic throughout the rest of this show. Mm-hmm. And here's the problem I have with their magic. It's just given to them. They don't earn it. No, it's like they earn it, but it's so, like... They earn it, but it's just... But it's like leveling up in an RPG. No, it's just transparent. Because kind of. it, it's like given leveling to up, them. Like leveling up in an RPG. Yeah. I'm with him on this. No, it's, it's just like, hey, you did this thing because of courage. And it's just like, okay, there's no real progression to that. What measures your level of courage? I mean, it's not as bad as Gosei. Oh, yeah. Here! <sighs> Why? Shut up! <laughs> because shut up. <laughs> Because there's a perfectly good explanation but yeah, for that. Their magic is just really, really given to them, and I don't like that. <laughs> it's like they didn't really do anything to earn it. It's just, you know, hey. Well, you they do something your... to earn it. It's just like what they, what they do is very arbitrary. Yeah. That's, 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 that's more the problem. You kissed a frog. You get a, new, you get a dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Who unlocks the spell Where did I dude? sign up? I mean. There it is. But yeah. Who unlocked the spell of dude? Uh, now, Sanjo, the car has known by now, uh, ends up having a train that comes along with him in episode 21 that turns into Trevelyan. This mech is awful. This mech is one of the worst. It's it's, it's, it's so bulky. Fat. It's fat. It just and its train look. form, it looks great. Yeah. But it's like they forgot how to make a train mech work. It's like you just I mean, how often did they? I was about to say, how often do they make a train mech? Well, we Six had or seven years before this. Go go five, and yeah, that one was great. The difference is that one was meant to be bigger because it was also the carrier. This one was not, so it had to be approximately the same size as Magic King, which was the stupidest idea I've ever seen. Yeah, but also it's magic. You could magically make it slim down. It's just so fast. But you can't do that in a toy. That's the problem. He has a point. Damn it. <laughs> I win! <laughs> I don't ever win this shit! <laughs> now, Toys! <laughs> usually some of these don't Congratulations. Come. Because a lot of the episodes prior but to the But we third all arc, still lose. <laughs> we all still lose in the end. A lot of the episodes prior to the third arc dumb. don't seem to matter as much. But in episode 23 and 24, because once again, this show is very God, good at the doing toy things. Is fucking hideous. <laughs> Sorry. This show is very yeah. good at actually expanding things to an appropriate length. They don't end up solving everything in a single episode. The show is good at that. Yeah. Also, what did we think about his morpher? Oh, the grip phone. Because it's a... It's an e-reader. It's a ticket... Re- it, e-reader, no, it's ticket a hole puncher. puncher. That's right. It's a ticket puncher. Ticket puncher. That makes me think... Because every time he, does, does he, literally punches, he literally punches a hole in a ticket. That makes me wonder, does that mean he has a limited amount of times he can morph? That was the first thing I thought. They Probably did that. Not. Two years later, in Dino. <laughs> Probably not, because it's magic and you can conjure them up infinitely. Yeah. Now, in episodes 23 and 24, there's a new monster that ends up coming out, and who, weirdly enough, they give this monster more or less a face, and they do a couple times where they close up on the lips, and it's actual person's lips that are talking. <laughs> so I was like, that's just It doesn't gross. happen much. It's gross. <laughs> There's a reason it doesn't happen much. It just doesn't look good. But it's uh, the Incubus and the Spider, who, because apparently Incubus wasn't really that powerful beforehand, but then he's using... Because this is how we need a spider. He basically ends up becoming Freddy Krueger. Spider. Where he goes into people's dreams, he ends up, like, following them, more or less, and he finds them, and they wake up, and he's, like, right there, and he takes their souls. And then he gives the souls off to Spider to actually hold them. And... Welcome to my new nightmare. Basically. And in this one, Subasa, like one of the, because Subasa is a boxer, and one of the kids that, you know, used to, is like the son of the owner of the boxing gym that he used to go to, uh, like, you know, was a fan of his and everything, so they used to hang out. And that kid is having his soul taken. And Subasa ends up, well, <laughs> Mandragora Boy, unfortunately, ends up telling him about a time magic, but unfortunately, it's, I think it's uh, the time magic, the name of the thing is Chronogel. That's the name of the user of mm-hmm. it. That's how you get younger. Make your hair look timeless. 
<laughs> that was good. That was good. I'll give you that. <laughs> but yeah, he, um, Magic Girl Boys are telling him about this time magic, and he was like, don't use this. It has bad consequences. Here's the thing about this. They say that it has bad consequences, but they don't tell you what the consequences are. So I'm saying, like, you could avoid a whole bunch of shit. Because, <laughs> like, seriously, proper warning is key. Mm-hmm. If you say, don't use this, your nether regions will fall off. I'll stay away. But if it's just something like, don't use this, you'll get a slap on the wrist. <laughs> don't Fuck. use this or your furniture will turn into waffle fries. Yeah. Just but like a completely random example. He ends up using it, one, to end up tracking to see exactly... Now I'm hungry, damn you. <laughs> he used the time magic to end up tracking exactly what happened to all the souls that were being taken to actually find Spider. And unfortunately, this time magic, after they do end up going out, they end up finding Spider, but he ends up getting away. Uh... Subasa ends up having a giant whirlpool of doom that ends up showing up in his stomach. <laughs> and he said, he Carl's like, if we don't, don't stop we, this... Don't we all have that? I was about to say, I know he does. Now, you eat. <laughs> but it doesn't destroy time. This whirlpool... Was funny. <laughs> a, apparently, if you don't get rid of it, it will destroy all of time. And I'm sitting here like... This reminds me of an episode of Justice League Unlimited, where a guy had a black hole in his chest that was sucking everything in. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, that's some shit. Because the next episode, he kind of was like, okay, this is my fault. I didn't tell you what the problem was. I'm going to go ahead and solve it. Then he ends up having to go to where Chrono Joe was. Basically, all the, like, they could create sort of their own little mini world that they can go to. Mm -hmm. And it happens in this one. Because Chrono Joe's been dead for a long time. But he has, like, sort of He was not timeless. He has a mountain where his... He has the Chrono Joe. His... (laughs) His, he has a mountain where his, like, his will is stationed and it sort of looks like him. But he ends up having to go through all these trials and everything. He's like super bloody and everything coming out of this. Rocks are falling on him. He's getting sucked down a river. Animals and everything just start happening. <laughs> not animals animal attack him. Animals not, start not, animal, happening. not animals attack him. Not animals try to eat him. Animals. Animals he, happen. It's true. I want that on a bumper sticker. Animals happen. The end of Forrest Gump. <laughs> Shit happens. But yeah, he ends up having to get a staff to basically, that's the only way that he can stop the world from, cool from happening. Subasa was like almost destroyed at this point, but he ends up going and like going with Oh god, it. I just reminded myself of what we're going to have to talk about soon. They're all, they're power up for him. Oh yeah, we will. That's actually very soon. Uh, we're basically going to skip the next five episodes. Um, good god. Right. But yeah. He has to actually get to think. Well, Zardin destroying the mountain just basically gets rid of Chrono Joe at this point. Because there have been like some sort of rivalry happening between Hikaru and Wolzard. They'll fight every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he ends up getting the staff. They end up using it on Tsubasa. Tsubasa is fine. But I love just that sense of tension. Because really something that big happening. Literally that big happening to just one person that could just destroy everything. That was great. That's like a really good way to actually really boost attention because they left episode 23 off on a great cliffhanger and I'm so happy we could just marathon this so we know how to go through that. Mm, yeah. Yeah, episodes 23 and 24 are great and I really just ended up mentioning it because of that and the fact that at the end of this episode he kind of ends up giving them all five rings, one for each of their colors. Did we skip the episode because I don't remember when this happened, the sniper? Have no, we... that hasn't happened yet. Oh, thank God. That's much later. But I say, I know you and you'll definitely talk about that episode. Now we're in the next five episodes. It's them constantly proving their courage. And in episode 30, we end up getting a Because this is the end of Soul Eater. Basically. Bravery! God damn it, this show. Yeah, basically the way they end up, you know, using their magic and just their power source is courage. And I hate something that's really, really... Vague? Yeah, vague and not defined. That just ends up making this that much worse. I don't really like courage as a power source for this show. What about, what about friendship? <laughs> that's worse. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, in episode 30, we end up getting to meet another uh, Heavenly State Snow Gel, who's like almost constantly in like a baby form. Yep, inside the belly of a fish. Yes, but Snow Gel is like the oldest of the living saints because she was under the original five Heavenly Saints that the Magic Rangers' powers are based off of. Yes. Make your hair cool as ice. And they basically Snow end up having Gel. to prove to her uh, that they are worthy of the legendary power, and they do, and thanks to those rings that Hikaru gave them, uh, that like boost the power of their magic phones, mm-hmm. and they can transform to their legend forms. But you're stupid. I, I like. Them. I really like the legend. No, like the forms. look. Yes, they look fine. The fact that they go from cell phone wands 
to rotary phone staff makes sense. I like it's it. Stupid. It no, makes it sense. I disagree. You want to know why it makes sense? Why does it make sense? These are legendary powers. These are very old powers. Dial phones are very old phones. <laughs> it makes also it, sense. Also, it works good for the staff. You go from wand to staff. Now, I get that part. I'm just talking about the rotary phone part. It because, makes hold on, I have to cast my spell. They press one button. Also, typically their spells are three buttons on the phone. Yeah, they only press one. <laughs> and now it's been consolidated into one. Here's the thing, though. They I'm never dead. actually technically press the five. And the reason they don't press the five is it actually ends up becoming a thing I'll talk about next episode. No, if it was actually just pressing it, this would not Well, happen. I mean, dialing the five. You know what yeah, I mean? if, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. If it, if it was just a matter of pressing it, wouldn't be an issue. But the fact that you have to... It doesn't go that slowly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like... pretty bits. fast. Yeah. But let's talk about these forms. I love the white. I love the white. The white the... makes it just look that much better. I, I love, love the, the changes to the helmets. The changes yeah. to the helmets are great. It like just makes it just that much bigger. And, you know, they give Kai uh, wings... Hoka ends up getting like an extension on the fairy wings. Uh, uh, dolphins, uh, horns. Yeah, for you know, mermaid Dolphin, dolphins gets fin. a fin. Uh, yellow also ends up getting extended wings, and green ends up getting bull horns. Yeah, bigger horns. I love the extension to the and they got rid of the capes, but I love the fact that they get a mantle. Yeah, and that just makes it just look that much better. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I said, look wise, aesthetic wise, I love the super form. Yeah, there's uh, uh, did they have the red? I mean, well, yeah, they had the line going all the way through. Also, this is a thing that's both true for the regular suits and for this one. They have an M on the suit. Yep. And they also still, I, some of them do get personalized versions, I believe, because the red on the rotary phone part open. Yeah. For, I guess, uh, bigger attacks or, I can't remember. Yeah. It looks really good, though. I love the way that these suits look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And next up, okay. I'll talk about the main plot of this episode first before we get to the next. Because it's like, Luna Gel basically ends up telling them, don't use your legend forms. If you do, you end up transforming into Majin. And it, once you do that, you'll basically just end up losing all your memories. They solved that too quickly. Yeah. That happens. They're just like, hey, we're giving Magic Shine this spell so that won't happen to you. Click, and it's gone. Consequences. What nah. consequences? Waffle this- fries. <laughs> <laughs> Waffle up. We're all friends. Friends love, love each other. other. Learned yesterday each other's two, two words. words. <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking Let's about. Talk we about. will explain it to you later. We have commenters who know what we're talking about. Let's talk about Sorry, Magic Legend. It's alright. I love this one. It's alright. White works. It does. <laughs> white works as, you know, just a thing. And I love the fact that... Well, the problem is white goes with everything. That's yeah, why White and or black. But here's the thing, though. I'm once not a again, fan of the tiny wings. <laughs> I mean, they expand in the finisher. In the finisher, but toy. But, but toy is yeah. tiny, sad wings. And also, though, that the hands can either be claws or just like actual hands. Yeah. And the finisher is a spear. But once again, though, Kai ends up being the phoenix by himself, and the rest of the team is the lion. <laughs> I'm sitting here like. No, stop doing that. No. Stop making red so central. What? No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is, a, this is a great, great match. I love the way it looks. I love the gold, the white, and the red. It just brings the entire suit together. I'm just noticing this, looking at the actual picture. Their colors are actually on the suit. Mm-hmm. Like, you have the red in the legs, but they have blue and pink bands and on the shoulders... You know, green and yellow. Mm-hmm. I didn't notice that. I don't, I don't see green. I see the blue. And the Green's green. on the right shoulder. Yep. Oh, is that green? It looks black in my picture. Cause... Yeah, that's green. That's cool. Now, let's take a break from the plot. Decker Ranger versus Magic Ranger. Uh-huh. This is the first time. I watched this after I finished the show, so yeah. I was a little confused a couple times. I was like, wait, didn't such and such happen already? Oh, wait, right, this... This hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Decker Ranger. This is the first time we get to see a battleizer from Power Rangers brought over into the show itself. So weird. It is weird to see that, isn't it? It was but extremely it's like, weird. It's one, SVD got popular in Japan as well, and they were just like, hey. And two, in terms of battleizers, this is definitely not the worst one they could have picked. Yeah. True enough. It's a, it's it doesn't look awful, but it's just it's still weird seeing something that was originated for Power Rangers in the Sentai. Yeah. Eh, I like it. And, you know, there is... I don't hate it. It's just... 
there are a couple of times that's like, oh, okay. In this special, we end up getting to see things because, uh, like, Miyuki, the, the mother, ends up having like, a special flower that she was going to give to Doggy and Swan because it's like, you know, it needs to be powered by love once a year. And ah. they were like, no, we're not going to take it. You know, that's a very big responsibility. We don't understand enough about magic. So Miyuki was like, okay, we're going to do it like with familial love this time around. Unfortunately, Miyuki's not there. <laughs> so they don't really have the flower anymore. But in this special, oh, there are a couple things that happen. We get to see Deck and Master and Wolzar fight each other. Yeah, we do. I'm so sad it was so short because it was awesome. That could have been the whole movie for you. I, it really could have been. I was just like, that. that's worth it. Yeah, it was sort of short, but it was really, really good. You know, I see the entire once again decorating the team all together again. That's just great to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, the next time we're going to get to see them is the Gokaiser. But here's the thing, uh, just going back to episode 30 oh, okay, and 31. I really wish that they would not have gotten the legend forms until the third arc started a few episodes later. Eh, that would have been a great way to just lead into it. Meh, didn't bother me that much. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not terrible. I just, you know, wish for me that that could have ended up happening. Uh, but in the next couple episodes, they uh, learned that Bullzard was a, apparently the father of the family after he was transported to after the last time he was fighting Emma Emma basically ends up taking him over and transforms him into actual Wolzar from Blazel. Mm-hmm. we haven't talked about like the heavenly saint forms yet this uh, Sunja and Blazel's mm-hmm. Blazel's looks great Sunja's is very intricate and I really like the way that it looks it's a very 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 good suit it just looks great I honestly wish we could have seen more of those things because we only got to see theirs, technically snow gels, because that's all she had. Yeah. And uh, Luna Gel. I don't really like Luna Gels that much. I don't like Luna Gels that much. And you can kind of see them with the Magi Rangers. Yeah. The old ones, the yeah. old Legend ones. Yeah. And so, but one, I I could watch a show just on those. But. Those are the great forms. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in like next episode, like next up episodes leading up to Mimi's destruction by Sun Gel because they end up fighting each other. Uh, because they were both Blade Gel students, so they end up having like this weird bond or something. They end up having like a bond fight where they're chained together and they can't, you know, beat each other. I mean, they can't get away from each other without actually beating each other. Mm-hmm. Unlike the goddamn Ultraman Ginga movie, they don't take the shirts off. So, you know, they that's actually explained in this one. Continuity is a nice Bullshit. thing to have. That's what it is. But yeah, in this next episode, we finally end up getting to see that uh, Bolzard is, you know, Blazial. Kai is having no. some issues with this because this I is the guy, basically, this is the guy that ended up striking down their mother. And your father. And your father. <laughs> and not your father, but we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Kai's of having some issues. He was the youngest one, so he didn't really remember his dad. Mm-hmm. And that sort of ends up culminating in the next couple of episodes where he's just like, he's very, very reluctant to accept, you know, Will's art of his father, but the wow. others are all for it. They're just like, we remember him, you don't. <laughs> you were literally a baby when he left to go fight the devil. Like most dads do. Now, in the Magic Ranger movie, uh, because well, I'm talking about... Mine just went out for cigarettes and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> mine went to go <laughs> fight the devil. <laughs> Is that what you tell the kids at school and make yourself feel better? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this got so dark. Yeah, in the Magic Ranger movie, they also end up getting to see like a Pegasus that ends up transforming in, uh, with Kai into uh, St. Kaiser. That ends up showing up in episode 34. That explains why when I was looking up pictures of the Max, I got a St. Saiya picture. <sighs> he expanded his cosmos. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of dick jokes. That was so good. <laughs> But yeah, St. Kaiser. I, like I said, I agree with you. It's a much better suit because of the white. Yeah. And the fact that it bounces out the red. Like, it makes it just so much, it makes the red stand out that much more where the black sort of sucked it in. So it just makes that much better of a color distinction between the two and suits. This, and no, we are not racist. Now, Mimi ends up dying in this episode. Oh, no. Thank God. He really what didn't shall do we much. ever do without? He really didn't do much. He was just a dick. Who? Exactly. There you go. <laughs> now, in episode 35, because they do talk about uh, Mimi, like, right before he dies, just like, the gods will come back or something. And in episode 35, they make this sort of a clip show 
but they do it sort of interestingly because before Blazio went to go fight Emma again, he was like, your mother's still alive. Mm-hmm. And that basically ends up leading to this clip show, you know, Magic Shine doing his memory uh, spell on them to see, you know, where was your mother last located because Urawa is trying really hard to see where she is. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work though. The crystal bar only doesn't go into so far. But what else is he... magic has a range. Yeah, it does. But in episode 35, though, at the end of this episode, uh, yeah. after Vancouver has been reading like a book of prophecy or something like that, where it's telling everything that's been happening up so far, mm-hmm. but this book has been stuck in a wall. She's like, the fuck is this? So <laughs> they end up going... As you would. Vancouver, like The book flies away, and she ends up finding the gods of Infertia. I like this arc so much. Mm. <laughs> this he really, really does. It's a great arc. I don't blame him. Like, it's a, it's literally the best thing about this show. Not gonna lie. And, you know, over the next couple episodes, because the gods are just like, hey, we're gonna go ahead and do this uh, because they have their divine punishments. And if they don't end up carrying out their divine punishments, except by their own, you know, time limit or something like that, they get destroyed. And that happens to Ifrit in the first episode. Uh, well, the first episode they, after the end of coming up, because they, <laughs> the gods bring up like this gigantic step, like set of steps. They're just standing on it, and they just all look threatening. You know, Magic Shine and Trevelyan try to go fight, and they just get the shit kicked out of them. They're like, "We will be taking over your world." Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because what? they basically yeah. all go off of a plaque, but uh, it's supposed to be the will of Inma. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that ends up. There are so many religions. Can I say? Well, a lot of them are based on either gods or deities from other religions or Greek myths and whatnot. Really? Who's the sniper based on? <laughs> He's a cyclops. Fair enough. Mm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I walked into that one. <laughs> Just like what? Yeah. Because I love the fact that when the first one they end up finding Ifrit ends up having like a time limit that he sets before he destroys the world. Mm. And when he doesn't, he does it. Like, I love the fact that they don't beat the first one. It's literally Dagon, who is like the the lord of the, well, I guess the, the gods on the ground, mm-hmm. ends up going out and like, you didn't complete this by your time limit. Your life is forfeit. And he kills them. Because they must follow the rules. They literally have to follow the rules. Episode 37 and 38, The Sniping. Mm-hmm. This episode was tense as hell. But going back and rewatching it, I did not like the, you know, the whole strife between Tsubasa and Makito. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that sort of brought the episode down. <laughs> like, the, the rest of it, like, once they really focus on Cyclops, who's the actual sniper, that's so tense, just like them running throughout the city. But going back and watching this so soon after Decker Ranger, Decker Ranger did it better. True. Because he attacks out of mirrors. And like, you know, that one enemy from, uh, what was it, Decker Breaks Pass or something, like kills his parents, ends up doing it just that much better than Decker Ranger. Because, you know, he's... Well, there's more you can play off of that with, with that particular character. Because you got the whole, he's in the rearview mirror trick, but he's not in the car. So you got more to play with. He's it a legitimate like, sniper. Yeah, it just, it felt like, because of the fact that he just enjoyed it that much more in Decker Ranger, like he enjoyed torturing him. Yeah. No, and yeah, that like I said, that much. More you're dealing with different character. characters. Here. Yeah. You're dealing with a serial killer psychopath versus a guy who just has a job, essentially an assassin. Yes, he has a job to do and he's going to do it. The tension is because sniping is scary. You don't know where it's coming from. Like there's that whole part where Magic Green goes out and he has like this rock armor, mm-hmm. and he uses that to deflect the sniper's bullets, which work. And, like, you see Cyclops get more and more upset, and then he, like, calms himself down, and he shoots the same place over and over again. And that he just breaks through the armor, and I'm sitting here like, that's some good shit, because that's so smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he gets him, but they end up doing, like, at the end of JoJo Part 3, when Kakyoin ends up getting killed by Dio, yeah. and he slices the clock in half. Mm-hmm. He does, like, Makito does that by throwing his axe into a mirror to show that's where the attacks are coming from. And I'm sitting here like, okay, this is JoJo now. So, <laughs> so it's automatically great. But yeah, I love, like, the, this episode and the next one, just seeing them getting constantly hunted down. Like, he gave them a little time limit of three hours. And he said, if I don't do it the by that time. most dangerous game. Yeah, it is the most dangerous game. Yeah. If I don't get you by three hours, you're good. And I'll leave. And I'll get destroyed 
whatever. But he does get most of them. He gets uh, Makito first, then he gets Hoka as they're just running across the field. He's like shooting out the trees around him, and he shoots her from a puddle where the light's reflecting off of. And then he ends up getting uh, uh, Urara, like he sees that, uh, what, he's like in a a car window. Mm-hmm. And uh, Hikaru is actually over there fighting another uh, Heavenly Saint, Drake. Who ends up being a much you know bigger thing later on? Because Hades, Hades God Drake. Yeah, Drake is sort of an ass. He's just like I'm bored. I want to go do something, so he does. And Gorgon's just like I'm just here to be sneaky, and that's her entire thing. Uh, but yeah, I love these two episodes, and then seeing Subasa just really have to step up and actually find out the way to get into the mirror is like as soon as you shoot that bullet, I'm going through the mirror after you, and then he does. And he ends up beating uh, Cyclops. It's so good. And in episode 39 and 40, this is the one with... Uh, Gorgon. The, yeah, Gorgon and Toad. Mm-hmm. Because Toad ends up using his ability to switch Kai and Hoka's bodies. Uh, they end up... And this is the episode, you know, the one that we were talking about earlier, where Hoka, if she would have been the Red, I would have been all for it. She was a great, you know... I feel like if she would have been the Red Ranger... It just would have worked a little bit better. Mm-hmm. She's not as loud as Kai is. And they could have played a character a lot different, too. Yeah. No, well, could have would have showed up, but... Yeah. I still love this episode. Yeah, it's a, it's a great set of episodes. You know, Gorgon is basically swallowing three out of the five... Four out of the five... Uh, four out of the six, imagine. I can't yeah. count. Uh, Numbers are hard. Gorgon is getting defeated in episode 40, but... Uh, Dagon has been looking for Wolzard... And Wolzar sort of comes out, of, comes to him out of a lake, mm-hmm. and it's just like you are holding in my soul in your body. That's why you were still in the Wolzar form. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, but you don't know what the hell I am. So, <laughs> uh huh. But yeah, and in, in the next couple of episodes, it's a beginning of the two part battle between Drake and Sleepmare because Snowgel tells Hikaru that he has to ha- learn something from Kai. And I love how at the end of this two-parter, because Snow Jane ends up getting her ass beat by Drake, mm. just like, you deserve that for being an ass. Yeah. And I love how at the end of this one, just like, I didn't learn anything from him. I just have to learn how to not think as hard. And just like, okay. So he just ends up shooting him in a whole bunch of places, and he ends up getting, because Drake has, like, super defense, shoots him in, like, the back of his neck, and that kills him. And, you know, they end up growing big, and they end up destroying him in that episode. And this is also the Christmas uh, part of the show, so you know, mm. who cares? Uh, what? <laughs> Chris's episodes are usually terrible. Don't act like they're not. I'm looking at you, Gekki Ranger. The Gekki Ranger was okay. They've so gotten bad. better. The Go Casual was okay. And, but, uh, you know, Go Busters, that actually has something to do with the plot. And, I hate Christmas! <laughs> and X8, of course. That Christmas episode was a thing. At least half of it. Uh, and then they end up finding out because their mother is being being held in a you know a garden of thorns and yes. that's Toad's garden, which sort of doesn't make as much sense because they say that they've been sealed away for a very long time, and I'm saying like he must have gotten like where she was almost immediately or something as soon as he came out because who knows when they got woken up, mm. but yeah. They end up finding their mother over the next couple episodes. So you finally get like a family attack together, which is great because they all have staffs. And then they end up beating uh, Toad because he was his divine punishment was to bring down like a whole bunch of frogs from the sky, and those frogs would just start destroying people. The biblical red frogs. Yeah. Now, episode forty five and forty six, Hoka ends up befriending <laughs> <Anyway>. Titan. <laughs> Titan is very different from the others. Like one of the first things that he does, he starts taking the electricity from uh, basically everywhere, and he said. Days time this and then coming down and mm-hmm. delivering the divine punishment. But he's just seeing a dog and he's just like, I don't understand what this thing is. And Hoka was just like, Okay, this is a dog. It's a little, it's a little Inu puppy. Yeah, it's, it's like, so Oh my cute. god, it's so cute. <laughs> but yeah, Hoka is a befriending Titan in this episode. And at the beginning of this episode, you know, there was this whole thing where Hoka is fighting like an old broken down chair. She was like, We can fix this. And Makito's like, No, it's you're an point. idiot. It's an old broken down chair. Yeah. <laughs> and this entire time, uh, because by this point, they have found in Masol, like they found Blazio because uh, Dagon had Vancouver, like put one of the scales on Blazio and they found him and they, Blazio beat the shit out of sleep there first. <laughs> uh, I mean, Wyvern, that's another one of the gods. He's like sort of the nice one at the beginning and then he decides to become a dick. So. <laughs> they got under it. Yeah. 
Uh, but there's that whole plot line. He, uh, Wyvern's not like Bleach Out because he legitimately injured him in the beginning. And Titan is... This is how you do a character arc. Like, for a character that you really don't end up doing much with, because, you know, he's the one who defeated... Um, uh, he's the one who defeated Blazel, took the soul, Dagon took the soul back, and just like, in my soul, we end up choosing one of us to come back mm-hmm. as, you know, we'll sacrifice our body and bring back Inma. And it ends up choosing Titan. And I love the scene where, you know, it's just Hoka. Megiddo's there because he decided to come out and like try to attack them. And yep. Hoka's like, no, don't do that. And, you know, his. There's like a giant pillar of fire that's coming up below Titan is in the soul going into him. Mm-hmm. And Hulk is like, okay, we got to do something to actually try to save him. He's not a bad guy. He already canceled his divine punishment. She told him to kill her, and he was like, no, I'm not going to do that. He gets rid of his divine punishment. They basically end up running away after Wyvern is coming out. Um, just like, I guess it shows you, along with Sphinx. We haven't talked about her that much, but Sphinx is also. I, lo- I like Sphinx a lot. She's a great character. I love what they did with her. I really wish we could have got a little bit more with her in some cases. Mm-hmm. But she is like she's always questioning everything. She's the goddess. She's of one of the wise gods. Yeah, along with Gorgon. Gorgon was a cunt. <laughs> I've been using that word a lot lately. I'm watching tell. a lot of British television. <laughs> okay, that might be why. <laughs> but yeah, Gorgon was terrible. But Sings is just like okay. I'm constantly questioning this. You know what gives you your power? And you know. Everything like that. I actually have his own next couple episodes. But uh, Hikaru basically ends up kidnapping Smokey mm-hmm. and uh, Trevelyan. Hikaru, uh, they end up going into the plane with Ti- uh, the train with Titan. Makito jumps on. just like, I'm not going to trust you, but my sister does, so I'm not going to do anything at the moment. But they end- He basically ends up telling them, I'm going to go to this lake where I can go to sleep and keep in my soul inside of me so he won't wake up and I can just basically go to sleep forever. And... Uh, uh, pink. Why? Why do I have to have a problem remembering names? Hoka. <laughs> Hoka. It's a trial and a tribulation. When, we, <laughs> when you watch as many shows as we do, the names all start to blur together. You know what help you in this case? Hoka. Hocus Pocus. You're not wrong. Yeah. But yeah, they end up going to uh, the forest where the lake is located, and Wyvern is up following them. And I love that fight that they had on the train, which I swear they just basically use the same set against Tokyo Ninja ten years later, but. <laughs> Still not as bad. Still not as funny as the fight on top of the train in Tokyo. You're not just talking about. But yeah, there's that whole scene where they're like fighting on the train. Uh, Hoka ends up basically making Wyvern fall through the floor. Yep. They end up going, and you know they're running through the forest, and Wyvern starts chasing them after a little bit. And there's that scene where he thinks he's attacking Pink, but it's actually, uh, it's actually Titan, and like Pink's form because Pink transformed him into her. And then they go out, and uh, Makoto and Makito. Maki- oh, it's so hard sometimes. Makito and Hoka, like Hoka's transformed into Titan, and but Wyvern can see that she has the bow on her back, and when that happens, uh, it's actually her. He ends up attacking them, and all the others end up coming out, and Blazia ends up coming back, and ends up defeating Wyvern, because Wyvern is sort of going insane a little bit at this point. He's just like, Enma's in you, we serve Enma, you're going to die. Hmm. And there's that scene... Which makes sense, because Enma is Cthulhu. Yeah. He inspires insanity. But there's this scene that just sort of... he's based on him. This is, like, a really good scene. And this is sort of what makes you like Hoka just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's that scene where Titan's about to go into the lake. Dagon comes right in front of him and just, like, stabs him. Yep. And then he stabs him in, like, the head. And then, like, after... Like, through the afro. (laughs) After they end up beating uh, Wyvern, like, you end up seeing Titan just growing... Off in the distance, and he looks directly at Hoka. He's like, I'm so sorry. And then, like, Emma just bursts out of him. And I'm sitting here, like, I felt sort of bad. <laughs> this yeah, way. I did. Because I like Titan. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he was trying to understand just that much more. And this whole thing ends up happening. And Sphinx is sort of, at the same time, was questioning them. He's like, okay, I'm going to tell you some information. You're going to give me some information, too. And they end up doing that. Uh, they have their own whole exchange of information. Sphinx is going to take him into their world. Uh, the other four, that is. And, you know, the reason that we end up fighting so hard is because we have courage, and that's what fuels us. Like I said, I really wish it just wasn't that arbitrary. <laughs> mm. Because it sort of brings it down the tension level. But, Enma, 
and my, and so coming back. And like I said, I want to take a moment and talk about tentacles. That too. Magic Ranger has some of the best monster designs in Super Sentai, it's, yeah. especially for the main villains. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. a very very good suit. This is just one of the best. Also, yeah, for definitely yeah. terrifying. Wolves are fire is coming back in this episode. Too. Hey. Yep. Yes, this is the red version of Wolves are. Uh, in episode forty-seven, here's the other wedding I was mentioning, because uh, Hikaru and Rara were sort of having like some sort of romance that really happened since the beginning of yep. the show. You know, ever since the frog kiss and everything. But I like the relationship. I do too, but I have a problem with this particular thing. What is this? They go on one date. Next thing you know, they're getting married. Well. <laughs> so you're like. Considering how much they've been through, how much they've I fought mean, together. Yeah, but they haven't. They, his... They've bonded a lot over the course of the show. Have they? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. What's his. La- it's like. <laughs> he, doesn't have his... A, he doesn't have a last name. That's What's his the... favorite food? Can you answer shit like that? But st- I mean, they were to, tell, gold. to tell you the truth, I don't think you've been weakened into that. Because originally he was going to leave after Enma came back, because once Enma came back, he saw his death. <laughs> and I was thinking, like, well, that happened. Mm-hmm. He was like, I'll go and leave because I don't want it to you know, be any harder, and I had to go back. Oh, to so she wants to marry him so he can die, and she gets half his shit. Got it. No, because she didn't know. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a bad joke. Boo! But I've I- made worse jokes in here. At the yep. end of this episode, though, right when they're about to, have been cut. at the end of this episode, right when they're about to go in for the kiss, Rin bursts in and says that Magitopia has been destroyed. And at the beginning of the next episode, we actually end up getting to see Magitopia, which is basically a whole bunch of floating lands, and Magia, of it is. who is someone that we and definitely do know. It is so bittersweet seeing yeah. her again. Yeah, because she, uh, it's, it's Magico Soga. Yeah, it's her last. She sadly passed away a few months after this. Yeah. And it was just like, she was just, because you can see just how much she enjoys playing this role. She, this is the first time she, she wa- once again, again, she is just having the greatest time. And you can really tell for, you, with this performance. You can see that in her smile. And like, mm-hmm. this is her, it's her final role, but this is also the first time she actually gets to play a good guy. Yeah. And I, I, and it works. Yeah. She's great. <laughs> and it's just, I felt so bad because it's just like, like, I felt bad, but I felt good at the same time. This is the last time I get to see her, but I just loved her so much. Yeah. Just seeing her just acting like this and looking so happy on screen. That's how you should remember somebody. Yes. And I think that's the thing that just makes it just stand out that much more. I love Machiko Soga. As we said, once yes. we did uh, some Vulcan and uh, Zoo Ranger, and of course this. this is, she's just great. And I definitely do miss her. This is one of those actresses where I wish she had more... But yeah, this is the last thing that we got, but I'm glad she went out on something that was like such a happy note for her. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, in this episode, though, yeah, Enma ends up going up. He destroys that world. Uh, Ren ends up going to find Snow Gel. And uh, Blaze Gel and Sun Gel end up going up, and they try to end up fighting Ma- uh, Enma up there. They get killed. And yeah. then Magic Ranger, I'm sitting here like, it's been a while since we had a Ranger die. Oh, here we are. <laughs> I felt like there was a quota. But, yeah. They die. Uh, the Magic Rangers they basically... They the way of Gow Ranger. The Magic Rangers basically end up getting transported into the future. Uh, and after Enma basically tentacle reaps them for a little bit. I knew... Dan, I knew there was going to be a tentacle rage. It's going to happen. <laughs> there had to be at least one. Enma, Enma, he has wings made of squids that have tentacles instead of actual wings. Here's the problem I have with this, though, because once again, this show got very red-centric very quick because they were doing, like, nothing to Enma. He basically was taking their legend power away, actually. Pretty much. Because he could eat magic. And... Delicious. But at the um, end of um, it, um, like, Red ends up, like, I'm super powerful. He ends up stabbing Enma. They end up going back to the past. Well, it's the, whole, it's the whole ambiguity of courage again. Yeah. Because Dagon really... I don't really blame this on Red. I blame that. I blame it on that. Because, like, they defeated Sleepnir. Uh, he was the last god besides Sphinx because uh, Dagon and Sleepnir basically ended up deciding that Sphinx was a traitor yep. because she wasn't going to bring Enma back anymore. And they basically ended up trying to cut her down. Van Courier basically ends up saving her. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miyuki ends up fighting off Dagon by herself, which was badass. 
They end up getting taken down to the underworld. Uh, Sphinx ends up saving her. They kill Dagon. Mm-hmm. They come back. Vancouver decides to work with Sphinx, and they end up bringing back Sunjel and Blazel. And we end up getting a sweet scene of, you know, them all transforming the, hel- the Helmless Roll Call. Yep. Uh, in this one, for all of the rangers. For all of them. That's great. And they end up doing, like, some powerful magic spell that was, like, family love and everything. They feed it to Enma, and they bloat him and blow him up. They what him? Bloat him. They bloat him. they eat him. He eats himself to death. No, I, I, I know. As it just sounded like, sound more of a D than a T. <laughs> bloat him. <laughs> they blowed him up. They and blowed him like a balloon. They end up going... Because, you know, that's the end of the show. They go to one year later. There's a road being made between the first year and the uh, upper world. I love Sphinx. It's just like the overseer of all of this. I love that. And I also love all the minions that are just doing construction work. And they're like, la, 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 la. And Kai is appearing like the emissary for them. Uh, Urara and Hikaru have gone back to Najitobi. They live there now. Najil was not killed originally like you thought. Uh, she came back. It's once again great to see her. Uh, and I love Kai's look at the end of this. You know, he has the red and everything, which is the same look that he had in Gokaiser mm-hmm. when he came back in episode three of that show. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of Ranger. Let's go ahead and get into these characters. Kai! Yeah. Gets oh, better. I liked him. He does get better. Once he calms down, he becomes a much better character. He took a chill pill. He really did. He did what Bond did in that span of time. I will say this, though. Him being the loud and energetic one, it makes so much sense in this show. Much he's more. The he's the he's the youngest. He's kind of a brat. His, the his his magic is fire, so he is very passionate. It work it works in this one. I'm glad he has because to it's calm actually kind of because it's actually kind of justified in in ways that make sense. I'll give yeah. you that. Like once he gets better, and it's weird because there is no team up with this team for the next year. The next one's the thirtieth anniversary. Right. They just never bring back a whole bunch of random rangers. And you said that Makito's actor is the reason we never got a We'll get to him in a second. Though. Okay. Uh but yeah, Kai is definitely we'll getting get better and I love when he came back in Go Kai Uh you know I like that I like that a lot too, because that was the first time I saw him. Yeah. Was that he was, you know, calm, he was just and going like, back and looking at it now. It's like, oh that's cool. This is this is a definite growth for this character. You see we're at the end. I just love the redness here at the end. I love like, the red in his hair. Yeah, it just looks cool. Mm-hmm. Subasa, future nice. beat buster, future beat buster, future future magic teacher. Yeah. Ah, oh. but yeah, <laughs> he's Subasa. sort of standoffish in this show. Yeah. He's that middle child. Yeah. yeah. So just kind of awkward. He is the middle child. Yeah. He's kind of a mix of Kai and Makito. Yeah. And, you know, but his monotone it sort of just really brings his character down. Yeah. That's like the worst thing. I don't, I don't know if that's how he was written or that's how he was directed to do it or it was an acting choice, but either way, it's just, meh. But he does. Not a very interesting performance. Yeah, I mean, you definitely even getting to see him get better over the show. Not his acting so much, but his personality, because he's very standoffish, and especially at the beginning where he just didn't want to become a magic ranger. Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, we have something to do here, and then he ends up becoming a, a you know a magic teacher in London, and he teaches Al Ninja. No, why not? Yeah, uh, ooh, rah, rah. I like She her. was the quiet one, and but it worked for her because you know she had some definite outbursts. She was definitely the mother of that team mm-hmm. when their mother wasn't there. It's a nice <laughs> contrast between her and Hoka. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's actually the legitimate point here. But I, I liked her. Uh, really wish I would have done a little bit more with her because. Especially at the end, you know, they end up having that whole relationship with her and uh, Ikara. I really wish it would have just done more Ikara. to build on that. Because he didn't really do as much with that as they did. didn't really do as much with it, but I still thought it was cute. They yeah, were I mean, they, they were perfectly fine. I still like uh, both of them. Hoka on second watch is very different than Hoka from first watch. <laughs> she got better. She's kind of annoying, but um, yeah, I don't think I ever hated her once. Marcus did. I did not like her, especially like when we made the bottom ten pinks when she yeah. was on there. But she's she like was going back there. and watching this. You can see like she's very caring and compassionate, but she is very flighty, especially at the beginning. She's you know worried about guys all the time and things like that, and just like eh, I really don't like that about your character. But seeing her interact with Titan sort of makes up for basically. The Would the you show. reconsider having her on the bottom ten? I honestly would. Yeah. She okay. definitely got better. I have to redo that soon. Yeah. yeah. She definitely did get better. I liked her a lot more on second watch. Just, you know, going back and Don't watching. worry. Miss America 2 will always still be number one. 
Mr. America 1. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. the, the second one was good. I, meant that. I, meant, I, meant, I knew it was one of them. Makito. He was the older brother, but he really had to learn how to take a step back from just being so overbearing throughout the rest of the show. And that definitely was showing, you know, Kai and becoming the leader. That was something they had to deal with very early on. And just him having to learn how to be a lot calmer and not try to, you know, always worry about his siblings because they can take care of themselves. You know, they're on their way to becoming adults. And with all the stuff that you had to go through, I mean, come on, loosen up the reins a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. And he is also the reason that we did not get a 10-year adapter special. His actor did not get along with the rest of the scene. Really? Yeah. You would think that they would just because of how they acted on screen. But yeah, here's, what, here's the thing that's fascinating about that because I completely bought from start to finish that these characters were siblings. The, the actors all really portray that really well and props to them all for that. But hearing that is just strange. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just, you know, some people just don't like each other. Hoka, honestly, her actress almost didn't come back because she didn't like being in a kid's show. She didn't want to be stereotyped being in a kid's show. She actually moved to France after, like, a couple years after this. And then she came back in Yokaiju. No one expected that because... Kid you know, show. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's just like, Makita was the reason that they didn't do a 10 years after special. Because they said... From uh, what Which is a, that's really a shame too, because I really liked his character. From what uh, Subasa's actor uh, Hiroya Matsumoto, what he said in an interview last year, like they would have done it, but it was legitimately like they just could not do it with him. So, um, Sunjel Hikaru, he's the blandest. He's a, he's a little bland. He is bland, but I didn't, I didn't mind him. Like he's not terrible, but it's just like I don't really remember much about him outside of this show. It's like, yeah, we can remember things about, like, you know, someone like Aubrey Killer or Mega Silver or even Ko, who we don't like. But in We this, remember him for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. But, but like, he's Hikaru, memorable nonetheless. Yeah. yeah, Hikaru just doesn't give enough to really make him memorable. Fair enough. Except for his suit. Yeah. Ah, uh, Miyuki. Magic Mother. I wasn't in the show a lot. She wasn't in the, in the show, show a lot, lot, but I still really liked her. She was, you know, a mother, and it really showed whenever she was on screen, she was always taking care of her kids. Her presence is still felt even when she's not in the show. Especially when she's not on her, screen. In fact, her suit was always there somewhere. And her staff was always hanging up in that room. Mm-hmm. Uh, last one we need to talk about is Blaze Isabe. He was cool as Wolzard. He was cooler as Wolzard Fire. And I just love the fact that... Because he was red. <laughs> it's not even that it's just like you know he was their dad and he really ends up you know caring about them and that really ends up showing especially after he decides to come mm-hmm. back he honestly was not going to come back at all until his children were in danger because he was holding in my soul inside of him he's like if I come back there's a chance they could actually track me and they did but he had to go save his children mm-hmm. and that's his whole you know basic story arc and I just liked him his I actor mean, is also very good yeah his actor was great and I love the fact that his like, sometimes when it ends up coming to the voices, they don't always seem to match up the actions that the suit actor is doing. Mm-hmm. But for him, I mean, even though he wasn't a suit actor, his voice was so deep. You felt it from, like, five rooms away. So it's just, like, it had that much resonance. Yep. It just, it, and I love that about him. This show is so much better on second watch. I just enjoyed it just that much more. Even on first watch, I still thoroughly enjoyed the show. If you haven't seen it, definitely give it a try. If yeah. you have seen it, watch it again. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Uh, it's, would... it's definitely better on the second watch. Like, Magic Ranger is a very, you know, I don't really remember going into this show with that much, but watching it again, it's just like, okay, there are things I really like about this show, and there are some things I really don't like. Like, the first couple of arcs take a little bit to get through, but once you get to that third arc with the gods, it's just like, this is when the show just becomes that much better. Mm-hmm. Because of the internal strife and everything, and that whole thing with Sphinx, and just dealing with her, and t- uh, Titan especially. Like, that arc hurt a little bit, because we got to learn about this character, and learn about his, you know, wanting to be better, but then getting literally stabbed in the back of the head. <laughs> it was, it's a great I show. mean... But you know we have to look forward to next week. You know we're do- we just did the light side of magic. Why don't we go ahead and do the dark side of magic? Because next time we are doing the first season of Garo. Finally. <laughs> well, you know that's ne- that's our next review. You know what we're doing next week. Here oh. come the Power Rangers. Here come the Power Rangers. Here come the Power Rangers. Mystic Force. <laughs> and comparison. 
Magic Ranger versus this, of course. <laughs> it's going to be a thing. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. Bye, like, everybody. Like Join things. us next week. Join us on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter. Do all the shit. Please It'll support be- us on Patreon if you have not done so already. It is Please go support helpful. us on Patreon. And I know we don't typically like to talk about this. Please call your congressman about the whole net neutrality thing. Yes. We got we to nip this in the bud. Yeah. That's very important. For those of us who live in the U.S., go ahead. You know, I'm sure you've been to multiple sites where they're just like, hey, we're going to head now. I repost some stuff on Twitter, too. Yeah, and I make sure to just go ahead and do it whenever you can because this has to be heard. We can't have this happen. But yeah, that's our PSA for today. That's our PSA for today. Please go subscribe to Nerd in Denial. We're kind of going deep, a little, we're differing our tone to the tokusatsu genre. I showed my fiance the 2017 Power Rangers movie. It's been fun. It was fun. So look forward to that review. See you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.